Hello, hello, hello. Um, I was going to make a bigger video, but I decided I'm, I'm going to break it down into smaller chunks. Um, just a couple of videos to help understand certain things in the Unreal Engine 4 material editor. Uh, things that could come in useful later on. First, we are going to tackle derived tangent basis. Now, why would you need to derive a tangent basis? Uh, pretty much what it is, is you're converting from world space to object space. Um, could be mistaken if I am. Use your use your right to Google it. Okay. <laughs> um, anyway, deriving tangent basis, if you uh, bring that up, um, just you know, right click, derive tangent basis, double click on it. If it's blue when you bring it up and you aren't sure how this works, or you know, if something's going funky, in order to get a better understanding of how it works, uh, if it's blue, you can double click on it. Um, uh, from my experience, you can double click on it um, and it will. We will just double click. Alright, if you double click it will bring up the material function that creates it. Okay, you know, derived tangent func uh, basis. Uh, you're taking the world position of the pixel, uh, the vertex normal, and the texture coordinates, and it is allowing you to go ahead and transform that into your tangent, which is right here, and your binormal, which is right here. Now, in the derived tangent basis function, they are uh, transforming the input vertice normal by the tangent binormal and the vertice normal, which is fine. I, I imagine, you know, if you've got a separate vertice normal <laughs> that you're after. Um, from what I'm seeing, you know, all of this, uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, you know, don't take everything for face value, use your right to Google, or Bing, or whatever the heck you use, but, uh, uh, from what I'm seeing, and I need to do a little more research, this normal and this normal are one and the same. Now, you could get a different normal if you took the DDX and DDY of the world position and crossed ran, you know ran a cross on it which should give you a uh, cross product which should give you something that is uh, pointing in the uh, forgive me first thing in the morning January 1st but if these guys lean heavily towards X and Y, then this guy, the cross product of the two of them will lean towards Z, and so on and so forth. Uh, that might be useful. But, for me, it was not. Um, it was acting funky. This is not what I'm after. Um, I went through and recreated the thing just so I could get a better understanding of what's going on. And, uh, this is what I'm after. Okay, so if you are using the derived tangent basis and it just seems funky because I'm running a dot product of the camera direct uh, vector with the tangent normal, uh, tangent binormal and normal in order to get what I want here, if it's acting funky, like, uh, doo -doo -doo. Like this here, that's 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 just not gonna work for me. I mean, that's cool and all, but uh, that's not what I want. All right. So in order for me to use this to get this here, all I have to do, or all you have to do, something to try. If it's not working out quite right, is take the vertice normal that you're using here. And just bypass it all together. Um, and then you get, well, I got what I was looking for. So I get to keep everything nice and neat and tidy. Okay. And uh, 
just that was it. I just bypassed it. Um, the reasoning for transforming the vertus normal against this, because I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I haven't ran across that yet. I haven't ran across the need to do that yet. Um, but you know, I'm sure there's a good reason. But at face value, if it's not working, just bypass the the function itself with your vertus normal to where you would use the output from the world space normal and give that a go. Um, yeah. So this here, you've got you know, it's pretty much a switch between camera position, the pixel position. It gives you a, a switch that allows you to use world, including camera shader offsets or excluding. Um, that's pretty much all it is. So if, if you want to get down into it, you know, doesn't change a lot for me, but you know, it may for you. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, another quick tip, uh, when you know pretty much what something should look like, what a node should be out, you know, what the output of a node should look like, just uh, right click on it and choose preview, enable real time preview, and that will allow you to see what that node's doing without waiting for the entire material to to uh, compile. It, it'll start previewing it as soon as it gets to that point. Alright, where am I? And uh, the next video will be about getting curvature values uh, using the DDX and DDY for, you know, uh, using screen space to find it. Um, anyway, there you go. Uh, derived tangent basis. This is uh, how you use it. Text cord in the, the for the UVs, uh, which you can switch that to. You know, it gives you a coordinate index, um, which for me I don't have any need to use anything other than what is being used at the end. But maybe you got something else going on, so it allows you to find a tangent of the object in screen space apparently. So there's that. Hopefully it was useful. Hopefully it was informative. Um, see you in the next one.